Good morning. This is Dave Bergeson, Vice President of Client Relations at Association Management Center. And today I'm pleased to be joined by my friend and colleague, Steve Smith, CEO of Association Management Center. Good morning, Steve. So one of the things that you and I have talked about over the years is the fact that while a lot of associations and societies have an effective onboarding program for new board members, significantly fewer have a structured or an effective offboarding program for past leaders. So tell me about some opportunities and challenges associated with former leaders who are no longer on the board. Um, I, I will just say I'm really glad that we're having this discussion because I think there is a lot of energy put into bringing people into something and very little thought around transitioning out of something. And I've seen um, this happen a lot in good ways and sometimes in bad ways, frankly. So I think this topic is really important, particularly given the uh, last few years with the pandemic and the type of leadership that's been required for people um, in volunteer association work. So I think that um, I like to think about it as a graduation, right? So if you've been in, the, in a role or on the board for so many years, there's a time when your service ends. And if it feels like you're just being dropped off the cliff or you've been for, suddenly forgotten for all the things that you've contributed, that doesn't feel so good. Um, but if you treat it more as a graduation and you anticipate this is going to happen at the end of this year and you're planning, just like we do with students who are in high school or college or postgraduate doing fellowship work or really any work even in, in the um, professional areas that we work, we tend to think through how to structure that. It is, can be done effectively and it can be done in a way that is, feels off-putting and everywhere in between. So looking forward to sort of sharing some of those um, ideas and examples of things I've seen done well across many of our association partners. Well, I love that idea. It's a celebration, not only of the person, but of all the things that they've contributed to that past. So, or to the past success of the association or society. What a great way to look at it. So um, share, if you would, some of those experiences, some of those good practices that you've seen. Yeah. So again, if you think about how to plan for somebody's exit and, and the graduation uh, mindset, then to me, there's a few things you do. So first of all, as somebody's entering into that last phase, you start to have a conversation about that. Um, what are some of the things that people hope to accomplish in the remaining time that they have on the board um, as president? Um, you start to identify sort of who you're transitioning to, and you start to talk a bit about that future and how that can be done smoothly. So again, if somebody's offboarding from the board or from a role on the board, then you start to anticipate who are the new people coming in and how can you provide some in information, some insights and support to help set the next person up or people up for, for success also. You have a lot of knowledge. Um, nothing feels worse than to, to walk out the door with all that knowledge and never have shared it. So creating those opportunities to share knowledge. I think also having exit interviews and conversations either towards the end or even immediately following somebody's term is also very helpful. Um, I think it's a good time to, for people to reflect on what worked well, what would they um, suggest could be done differently um, with people who are on the board moving forward. Um, and also to identify ways that they may or may not want to be involved in some work of the organization going forward. I've had people say to me, um, I want to get involved in something again very soon. I'd like to be on a committee where I have subject matter expertise. I've heard outgoing leaders say, please don't call me for two years. Uh, I have other things I need to focus on now. This was a priority for many years, but now I need to pay attention to some other opportunities and activities, but I'm still very committed. And if you need me, call me. So I think it's important to talk to people about how they envision what their role might be or what their engagement might look like after they complete their term of service. Um, the other thing I would say is honoring the individual um, is very important. I think we can anticipate, I've seen groups gather, um, create an event or at a board reception, the first night of a two night meeting. What they do when they're together is talk about and celebrate that individual or those individuals. They ask people to share their reflections. What has this meant to you? What are some of the things you've learned? How have you grown? How's your organization changed? Sometimes people write these things up in advance and somebody might read them or they could even be distributed with the materials. But providing a time and space for that 
um, reflection to occur and that acknowledgement to occur in a meaningful way, I think is such a simple thing to do, but it often is forgotten. Now, what about ongoing engagement? So we talked about uh, celebration, reflection, transition, and then kind of post-transition engagement. So in your mind, uh, what should that look like or what does that look like? Yeah, so having a background in gerontology and working with older adults, it's been interesting to see how that plays through the association world. So it's so often that people, again, complete a, a, a part of their journey and then they're gone and we don't consider them as subject matter experts anymore, right? Um, these leaders have incredible experiences. They have a lot of political capital. They have external relationships. They've experienced many of the same challenges that the current board has, even if it was 10 years ago. So why would we let that expertise and insight disappear? So I think, again, there's things I've seen groups do. Um, what I don't think is great is to organize a formal body of, of past presidents or past leaders. But what I do think is helpful is from time to time to share with past leaders about what is happening in the organization, what are the strategic priorities, and what insights or feedback might they have about sort of what's happening in the, in the field itself, right? Um, I've seen some great panel discussions where a couple of past presidents are invited back into a board meeting and they're asked about what were the, the biggest challenges you faced and how did you overcome some of those obstacles? It's amazing how frequently those issues have resurfaced five, 10, 15 years later and the insights and the support from past leaders can be really valuable. Um, so I would say look for where there's subject matter expertise that continues or has grown that you can tap. Maybe it's to teach a course, Maybe it's to develop um, a product, or maybe it's to provide some insights or advice um, or counsel for current leaders. But again, I would limit that sort of uh, structure so that it doesn't feel like there's a second board of past leaders. So that would be my only uh, caveat to that. Yeah, it's great advice, isn't it? Because I hear you say recognition is important. Absolutely the case. I hear you say communication is important and not being able to, uh, not being afraid to utilize the skills and experience of past presidents. The thing about past presidents that we've talked about, right, is they have skills, they have experience, they have knowledge, but they also have influence, right? So I like what you said about finding that balance between communication, engagement, using their skills, but not necessarily forming a past president's council that has a a high stakes or formal role in governance, right? Wow, what great advice, Steve. Thanks so much for joining us today. Of course, thanks for having me.